Hi everyone and welcome to City Kids Online. This is your first time joining us. We are so glad you're here today. Hey, Ms. Cheryl, remember when we were talking about Philip and the teleportation last week? Yes, I remember that. God used Philip to share Jesus with an Ethiopian, Ethiopian official. And then, whoosh, Philip disappeared, showed up in another city. Well, I was working on building that teleportation device. Yeah. I still don't have it ready. Huh, that's okay. I'm thinking you might want to try your hand at something else. Maybe. Yes. By the way, I heard this word when reading about Philip in okay. the early church, and I'm not really sure what it means. Well, well, what word is it? Conversion or converts? What, what does that mean? That's actually a really good word. Well, I was thinking it's more of a negative word, like con or no. con man. Well, that's almost the opposite of a convert. A con man is a tricker or someone who fools people into believing something that's not true. Hmm, so what about a convert or conversion? Well, to convert means to turn or change. A, con a convert is someone who has changed from one thing to another. So if a man changed from like a man to a rock, would that be a convert? Watch, I'm, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> not, not exactly. Hey, come on, Joel. <sighs> this is not going well. Joel. I think it's I think it's working. <laughs> I don't think it's working. Yeah, I think it's working because I'm being hard headed like a rock. That that's partly true. I'm converted. Hey, let's let's stop being a rock okay. for a minute. I might have a better explanation. Okay. So remember how when you change the lights in our kitchen from old fluorescent light bulbs to an LED? Oh yeah, I changed to an LED because it worked better and it didn't use as much energy. That's right. You converted it to an LED. Oh, okay. Well, I get it. Here's another example. You can convert from an Android user to be an Apple user. Whoa, I hear a lot of people <laughs> talk about that change or conversion. So how does conversion fit into the early church and our Bible stories? Well, I'm glad you asked that. When people gave their hearts to Jesus and put their faith in him, they changed from their old way of life to a new one. Well, that makes perfect sense. They were converting from no faith to Christian faith or Jewish faith to Christian faith. Yes, and have we got a story today about a huge conversion. Like an alien to a Christian, maybe? Mm, you could almost say that. Well, can I say it? Um, let's not. Alien? <sighs> not. Sorry. Today, we're going to hear about Paul's conversion. Well, I think I've heard about this guy, Paul. Paul was a Christian hater. He hated the church so much, he would look for Christians and throw them into jail. Man, that's mm -hmm. pretty rough. In fact, he was there when Stephen was being stoned to death and he held the coats of all of those who were throwing the rocks. He approved of Stephen's death. Man, that's mm -hmm. crazy. And he had a conversion? Yes, but we'll see about that in a minute. Let's check out our big picture question. Okay, let me see. I think I remember this. All right, what is it? Um, why? Does the church exist? Wow, great job. Now, what about the answer? Do you know that one? Okay, let me see. Um, the church exists to glorify God by worshiping right. Him, showing His love, and telling others about Jesus. That's right, great job. Well, that's just how I roll. <laughs> really? If you were still being a rock, like you were earlier, you could rock and roll. Oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> All right, enough of this funny business. Let's get on to our story. Good idea. I'm excited to hear about this conversion. All right, here it comes. Watch this. After Jesus died, rose from the dead, and ascended to heaven, people in Jerusalem who believed in Jesus were persecuted or treated cruelly because of their faith. One of Jesus' followers, Stephen, was even killed. A man named Saul had watched in approval when Stephen was killed. Saul wanted to put an end to the church. He went into the believers' homes, dragged them out, and put them in jail.
many believers fled the city. Saul headed to Damascus to arrest believers there, but on the way, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. Saul fell to the ground. He heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, he replied. Get up and go into the city, then you will be told what you must do. Saul got up and opened his eyes, but he couldn't see. So the men who were traveling with Saul led him by the hand into Damascus. Ananias, a disciple of Jesus, lived in Damascus. The Lord spoke to Ananias in a vision. He told Ananias to go to the house where Saul was staying. Ananias knew that Saul had hurt many believers and that he arrested anyone who believed in Jesus. But the Lord said, go, I have chosen this man to take my name to Gentiles, kings, and Israelites. Ananias obeyed. He found Saul and told Saul that Jesus had sent him to help. Ananias put his hands on Saul and Saul could see again. Saul got up and was baptized. Huh. For the next few days, Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus. He began to go to the synagogues to preach about Jesus. Saul told the people, Jesus is the Son of God. The people were amazed. They recognized Saul and knew he had wanted to put an end to the church. Now he was one of them. The Jews did not like Saul's message. They planned to kill him, so one night Saul left the city. The disciples helped Saul escape by lowering him down the city wall in a basket. Saul was also known as Paul. Jesus appeared to Saul and changed him inside and out. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Jesus called Paul, who was once an enemy to Christians, to spend the rest of his life telling people the gospel and leading them to trust in Jesus. Wow, talk about a conversion. Yes, Paul was going one way and then got completely turned around. You know, you could say that Paul saw the light. And Jesus spoke to him. He said, why are you persecuting me? You know, God selected Paul for a special purpose. Yes, and that special purpose was to share Jesus with the Gentiles. You know, I think I remember hearing that Paul was God's chosen instrument. That's right. God had chosen Paul to spread the good news about Jesus to Jews and to non-Jews. Well, Miss Cheryl, I have a question about being God's chosen special instrument. Okay, well, what's your question? Well, does God have a special purpose for everyone? Yeah. I mean, if Paul was a special instrument for God, I'd be okay with being a kazoo. <laughs> a kazoo? <laughs> I don't think God needs any kazoos. But to, you bring up a really good point. God has a purpose for everyone. Even me? Even you. Boys and girls, God has a special purpose for you. He wants to use you to share Jesus with others and to bring Him glory. That's pretty awesome. Hey, let's go over our new memory verse. Oh yeah, we had that last week for the first time. We did. Uh, something about Jesus being the head. That's right. Colossians 1.18 says, He is the head of his body, which is the church. Yes, even though Jesus uses mm -hmm. us to do many different things, Jesus is the head of the church. That's right, that's right. Let's do this again, this time with the motions. Ready? Yeah. All right. He, he is, is the, the head of, of the body, body, which is, is the church. church. Colossians 1, 18. Great job. Yeah, we had a cool story about Paul's conversion today. Yes. And you know what? When people, when we think about whether or not they're for God or against God, we should remember this story because God can save anyone. Yes, he can. Hey, thanks for watching today. Don't forget to check out our activities online at citypointchurch.com. Yeah, and you know what? We'd love to hear from you. So if you can email us at castiel at citypointchurch.com, we'd love to hear from you. Have a great week. We'll see you soon.